Hail and Majors Adventures, welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. Today we're making build for Tempest Domain Cleric. So for today's race I picked Dwarf. Dwarf because he got proficiency with Hand Axe, Light Hammer, War Hammer, and I like these weapons, it's cool looking when you're playing Cleric, it's fun. Additionally he get Dark Vision, it's nice to have, and advantage on same throws against Poison. For our race I picked Gold Dwarf to get this bonus hit points each level. It's nice to have nice hit points because you are a healer in the party and when you are alive your party is alive too. Our class of course is Cleric and Cleric cantrips, 3 cantrips of first level is pretty basic. So we pick in Sacred Flame, our range cantrip, Guidance, it's just best cantrip for your dice rolls on ability checks, on dialogues, etc, etc. Produce Flame, sometimes you just need this extra flame to see something in the dark or just to throw it on the battles to fire them up. So our subclass today of course is Tempest Domain and it's a very cool cleric that got very nice and cool unique features. So like uh, we got Light Domain Cleric who got some fireball spells and uh, fire magic, Tempest Cleric gets this thunder magic. So first of all it's Wrath of the Storm and when someone attacking you, you potentially deal 2d8 damage of lighting damage or half. Additionally, get some spells, of course. Thunder Wave for Cloud, very cool spells too. Uh, for data, you pick whatever you like. For background, pick whatever you like. I like to stick with Acolyte, it's nice cleric background, I guess. And for our abilities, we will get some Strange 14 as our main attacking weapons will use this stat to hit and inflict damage. Dexterity to 10 just to get some armor class in early game and then we will switch to heavy armor anyway and not to lose our initiative. Constitution 16 to keep concentration, to have more hit points, intelligence 10 because we can and wisdom 16 as our primary ability for spell casting. So prepared spells, they will be a little bit different than most of the time. So most of the time we're going with guiding bolt, inflict wounds, healing ward and shield of face as our spells for first level but right now with changing inflict wounds to create or destroy water. So just like that let's go into the game. And as always let's level up to level 3. So on the second level already we get this subclass future. When we're doing thunder or lightning damage we can use channel divinity to deal maximum damage instead. And as always action for all clerics turn undead to turn them and they will fear and they will only run around and not doing any damage to you. So that one is very cool fusion, Destructive Wrath is awesome. And on second level we can pick some spells that we possibly will need. Bless is a nice choice, so Shield of Faith is nice if you need protection and Bless if you need to hit. Something like this we're picking and we're going to level 3. So third level comes with new spells and our spells of choice over here could be a protection from poison if we need it. Spiritual weapon is a nice choice, you can use it as bonus action to summon weapon and this weapon will fight alongside you, you will control it. Or my favorite, hold person, basically to hold persons in place and inflict critical damage to them. So let me show you this monster in early battles and why we picked these different spells. So first of all don't forget to start your day with shield of face basically and then if you got really nice armor and it's not really great armor you will have 20 AC and it will be almost impossible to hit you already. So just to demonstrate I will get this armor out and we will continue like that. So as cleric with bonus action you will heal your teammates most of the time with healing ward and as tempest cleric what you want to do sometimes is to actually create water around your enemies. But first of all make them gather in one place. So you can use your range damage spells or cantrips like Sacred Flame on your range enemies. And that's why we choose this Create or Destroy Water. We will combine it with our awesome futures. So we want to make everyone wet. We want to make everyone wet. And then we want to provoke some opportunity attacks. To do so just go outside of the middle range of enemies. You will provoke it and they will try to attack you. And when they are successful you can go and pick whatever you like and of course we're picking lighting damage because when enemies wet they will be vulnerable to this type of damage and just like that we're inflicting a lot of damage but we got one more pop up 
so do we want to use destructive press? And yeah, why not? We can definitely use it to inflict maximum damage right now. So basically, whenever you cast the spell, you will be prompted with the stuff and do you want to inflict maximum damage? Right now, I will press not to react and we will inflict 24 damage, that's crazy. Because when enemies wet, we will inflict this bonus damage, as I told you, and instead of 12, we inflicted 24 damage on third level. That's crazy. Right now, we don't have any lighting spells, so we should use our thunder spells. For example, shatter is nice, cool, strong spell. You just cast it, you use destructive threats and destroy your enemies while rolling more damage than needed. And this basically forces you to roll maximum damage possible. So let's level up and finish our build. Level 4, we get additional cantrip, just pick Taumaturgy for dialogues, and we get additional feet. Right now, we just want to pick Wisdom to increase our spell difficulty checks and chances to hit enemies, so just like that. We continue to level 5, and on level 5, we get this class feature for all clerics, and it's destroy undead. Whenever you turn undead, they will take radiant damage, that's cool feature, so your cleric right now can inflict really nice damage to undeads when you will see them. Additionally, we get bonus spells from our subclass, from Tempest Cleric, and most importantly, it's called Lighting. That's like, in my opinion, one of the most broken spells in world game from level 3 spells. Slit Storm is cool stuff, whenever you need to disrupt enemy concentration, just use this. So what we can add to our arsenal right now? Our main bread and butter spell will be Coal Lighting and its concentration spells, so most of the time you want to pick any spells that don't require you to concentrate on them. Mass Healing Ward is very nice, it uses bonus action to heal your teammates. Glyph of Warding, very cool spell, inflicts damage, can disable enemies, can build nice trap, Protect from energy, it's concentration spell, but if your party needs like this protection, especially maybe someone from your party needs this protection, it could be a nice spell. Otherwise, just go as always with something like Revify to be able to revive your teammates, and maybe even Cure Wounds will be usable right now to heal someone for large amount in the fight if needed. So level 6, we're going up to level 6 and we're getting this new subclass Future. When we're dealing, lighting our thunder damage to a creature that is larger or smaller, you can also push it up to 3 meters. Very cool stuff, nice addiction to our damage. And we're de dealing a lot of these types of damage. So level 7 gives us cool features. We're getting this Ice Storm, which is like Icy spell, this don't require concentration, really strong spell, why not to have it in our arsenal. Freedom of movement, you can cast it on the start of the day, it will last until long crest and it will protect you from difficult terrain, that's cool, why not. Additionally, cleric's best spells over here will be dash ward to cast it on yourself or on your ally, they won't be able to get killed and will be revived with one hit points one time while this is active and this active until long crest. And guardian of face is the cool zoning tool that will stay on your allies or in some area and uh, basically try to attack and kill enemies in this area. Very nice spell. Up next, level 8 with additional action and this action is cool for this type of cleric. So when we're doing damage with our weapon, we can use the stuff and inflict additional 1d8 chunder damage in addition to our damage. And because this damage is basically damage type, we can use this push action so you can just attack enemy with your basic weapon and push them up to 3 meters. That's cool stuff, cool future. And we get an additional future, additional feat. And this feat right now will be Warcaster. You definitely want to keep this concentration going on. You don't want it to be breaking, so you need this advantage on saving throws on concentration. So for Cleric level 9, we get in access to level 5 spells and we already got everything we need. Destructive Wave. We're doing Radiant and Thunder damage. That's cool. And probably we're knocking enemies prone. Very large damage spell, but there's one takeaway. It's rolling 5d6 and 5d6 Radiant. So we can't do maximum damage with the spell with our subclass Future that maximizes spell damage because it maximizes only Lighting and Thunder rolls. So another spell, Insect Plague, Concentration spell, creates difficult terrain, makes disadvantage on perception checks. Cool stuff, nice damage, but we won't use this a lot. So from level 5 spells, basically what we want to pick Sometimes it's useful to have muscular wounds and basically sometimes you just need this greater restoration. Nice pick too, so you can pick it on level 10. 
Level 10 gives us class future, divine intervention. I will show you this in a second. And it's cool future because you can use it only one time in a game. It won't be available anytime after you use it one time. So level 11 is cool level because we get access to level 6 spells. Most of the spells won't be useful to us. We don't need them. You can pick this planner ally to have summon on your side. It's a really strong summon. Another cool move. Cool dude is create undead to create mummy. It's nice summon too, but this one is stronger, a lot stronger. So if you want to have more healing in your party, get heal. It's really nice healing ability. Harm is nice uh, damaging ability. And Hero's Fist is nice buff ability to increase your HP basically. So hit points will be increased for your whole party. But we don't care too much about the spells actually, so pick them if you like them, if you need them, just analyze situation in the game and get to level 12. So on level 12 we're getting our last feat, our last prepared spell available and mostly focus on lower level spells or just to find some spells like inflict wounds, level 1 spell, it could be useful still. Hold person still very nice spell why not to use it in case you need and see some humanized and last but not least we're getting feet so we can go with wisdom plus two to max out it or we can go with elemental adept and of course elemental adept lighting so enemies who got resistance to lighting damage got no resistance after we pick this so we're just basically ignoring every resistances to lighten that enemy have and that's cool future for this build let me show you this in action so of course you can use this divine intervention it can be used to review your teammate it can be used to inflict a large amount of radiant damage or just to get some camp supplies and potions most of the time you will use it just to get this awesome weapon so you can use it to have this cool legendary plus three weapon devoted maze cool weapon why not to have it so how to play this crazy dude Start your day with basically using dash ward on yourself and freedom of movement on yourself, on your party, whoever in need more. Just like that you can be with nice variety of some buffs. So what do you want to do kinda in a battle? You can just go and attack your enemies with this Divine Strike Tempest and it will do a lot of additional damage. Cool parts that you can use it with ranged weapons, don't forget it, from double crossbow, maybe from your bow if you're proficient with it. And just like that you will be prompted with do you want to increase damage. But if you're killing your enemy you won't be prompted with this question, of course. And basically your strategy in a fight would, would be like this. You want to create or destroy water. Just go and make enemies sweat. A lot of wet enemies. Continue using bonus action to heal your teammates and yourself. And then when enemies wet, you basically go and use your coal lighting. And you can upcast it up to level 6. That's why you're not using these 6 level spells most of the time as this type of cleric. You want to upcast this lighting up to level 6, so it can do 6 to 10 damage. And right now, just to demonstrate, I will cast it over here, just like that. We don't need to use destructive breath on the ground, of course. Now we created this electrified water, just like that. It's like really bad surface to be in, and he will take a lot of damage and if he will stay in this stuff. But he jumped, he's smart, yeah, he's doing this stuff, and as you can see, we saved from his attack. That's nice because now we're keeping our concentration and now instead of doing only one level 6 spell and then losing this spell slot, we can use this activate call lighting every turn. So basically you can use it again and Tempest Cleric will <laughs> be like Zeus, you know, he casting this spell every turn and using his bonus actions to heal his teammates. And while you casting the spell, you will be prompted with destructive breath most of the time to inflict maximum damage just like that inflicting 120 damage with just one spell because you rolling maximum damage and it's doubled because he was wet so that's our main strategy and you can do it every turn for 10 turns and you can use this two times when you're level 12 cleric so basically you can do it two turns in a row to inflict 120 damage every time uh, that's cool that's cool that's just really crazy stuff so cool combinations that you can have when you fight fighting humanoids, you basically want to use hold person and if it succeeds, person who is now hold it will be not in a great shape just because every hit against him will be critical strike and it counts your 
stuff like uh, guiding bolt so every spell that doing attack roll as said here will be critical strike and that's crazy that's a lot of damage so in a fight you can use this stuff as zoning tool just summon this dude and he will attack enemies in this area so he's cool and if you stay in this area and your life stay in this area every time enemy attacks someone in this area you basically protected by this guardian but only in this area as you can see we not protected right now but now in this area we are totally protected so main game loop is kind of the same you just use your different magic shatter is still working thunder wave is still working for cloud very nice if you need some fog to blind your enemies and cool future and nice combo is for cloud on level one and it's level one spell really cheap because you're dwarf you get advantage on attack rolls against these targets and your attack roll is basically your guiding ball so that's nice feature to put for cloud on one turn and then use guiding bolt on second turn you still can use your tempest strike and yeah bread and butter still call lighting just upcast it to level six and do it every turn and that's like crazy stuff and as you can see they just flew away for three meters and that's because you're tempest cleric so as you can see there's like crazy damage and these dudes are just dead and that's only with cleric so if you want someone who can inflict large amount of damage while also protecting your teammates and healing them in, in need then tempest cleric is definitely for you i hope you enjoyed this build and it will be useful for you in your adventures in baldur's gate 3 Watch other cool videos on the skin right now. And yeah, see you in the next videos, guys.